Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, we have our free Christmas sale of Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirts now. Uh, they are less than normally priced, so you want to go to t-shirt.greatdetectives.net detectives.net and get your t-shirt ladies a slim fit tee or a pullover hoodie with the great detectives of old time radio great t-shirt design check it out t-shirt.greatdetectives.net and we do need to sell at least 11 for the order to ship so do encourage you to pick up your copy today all right, it's time now for today's episode of Boston Blackie the original air date on this one November 26, 1947, and this one is Blackie Breaks Up the Murdoch Gang. Okay, Faraday, have a nice time. Have such a good time that you won't come back for a while. <laughs> so long, Inspector. Faraday going away? Buddy? Yes, Mary, he's taking a little vacation. He called to say goodbye and warned me about Deputy Inspector Wells is taking over for him. What's the matter with Wells? Well, nothing, except that he's got ambitions to take over Faraday's job. Oh? Well, you ready to leave him? I've been ready for 20 minutes. It isn't every man I'd call for and then wait around till he got ready to go out. Well, I'm not every man, Mary. I just think I am when there's a crime around that's crying for a solution. Let's get out of here before the... What were you saying? It doesn't make much difference now, darling. <laughs> I know what you mean. Only, uh, take it easy on that darling stuff. That could lead me into trouble. Oh. Hello. Hello, Blackie. This is Sergeant Matthews at police headquarters. Oh, how are you, Matthews? Fine, uh, Blackie. We just got a tip at headquarters that the Murdoch gang is organized again. They got something hot going on tonight. I knew Faraday'd want you to know. Oh. A any idea where or how the Murdoch bunch is going to operate? No, but maybe Deputy Inspector Wells knows more about it. We'll see. Uh, thanks for the tip. I'll be seeing you, Matthews. Mary, Blackie, I... didn't I hear you promise Inspector Faraday not to fool around with any police cases when he was gone? Mm, yes. And didn't you promise me that you'd take me out tonight? Mm, yes, mm. but, Mary, I'm afraid I'll have to break both promises if I'm going to break up the Murdoch gang. <laughs> And now, back to Dick Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Tom, where is little Lenny? I ain't seen him since yesterday, Mr. Murdoch. Well, we can go on without him. Now, listen. Yesterday, we get the combination to the safe, but there is a half a million dollars in jewels. Tonight we open the safe and we are back in business again. Now, ain't that diamond company where the safe has got more armed guards near it than the U.S. Treasury, Mr. Maydug? True, Tommy, but since we are opening the safe with the combination, the guards do not know we are around. Mm -hmm. Mr. Henry Carson, who is kind enough to give us the combination, also is kind enough to tell us where we turn off the burglar alarm. So we have nothing to worry about. That's great, Mr. Maydug, but I guess we give this guy Carson half the hall for helping us out, huh? No, Tommy. Mr. Henry Carson is very unhappy because he is talked into doing such a dishonest thing as helping us to rob the company which employs him. So we are going to repay him for his generosity by putting him out of his misery. Oh, we're going to knock the guy off, huh? Yes, Doc. We will give him a sudden send-off. But when the police find his body, they will think that Mr. Henry Carson is just one more citizen who is so annoyed with living that he takes the easy way out. <laughs> Just like Faraday sitting here in Faraday's office. And you, Blackie, get out of here. You sound like Faraday, too. Look, I came down here I don't care to... what you came down to do. You're not going to do it. And look, I'm not fooling with you. This is police headquarters. You've got no business here, and I've got work to do. Work like the Murdoch mob? 
Who told you about Murdoch? What's the difference? As long as I know, let's do this thing together. Let's figure out a way to... Blackie, I'm not Faraday. I'm not working with you. I'm going to get the Murdoch gang, and I'm going to get them myself. Oh, vice versa. What was that? Just an expression. And speaking of expressions, I don't like the one on your face. As a matter of fact, I don't like the way you're sitting in Faraday's chair. In fact, as long as we're getting down to cases, I don't like you. Lucky, I'm going to... Well, remember, this is police headquarters. And you work here. Mustn't hit a citizen. You're a public servant, and technically, I'm your boss. Remember that. Did you come down here to annoy me, Blackie? No, but if I had, at least my visit would have been successful. I came down to offer to help round up the Murdoch gang before they get active. I don't want any help, and I don't need any help. Do I make myself clear? You do. And aren't you surprised? Beat it, Blackie, fast. Beat it before I lose my temper. Faraday's office has gone to your head, hasn't it, Wally? Are you getting out of here or not? I'm going. Only I've got news for you. Maybe you fill Faraday's office, maybe even fill Faraday's chair. But, Wells, you'll never fill Faraday's shoes. Blackie, don't be unhappy because Inspector Wells threw you out of police headquarters. Oh, I'm not bothered about that, Sergeant Matthews. What burns me is that Wells, of all people, has taken Faraday's place while Faraday's out of town. He wants Inspector Faraday's job, doesn't he? Well, that or he wants to show he's just as good an inspector as Faraday. Which she isn't. Which no one is. <laughs> I'm going to work on that murder case whether Wells likes it or not. You know, Blackie, actually, there is no case. All we know at headquarters is that some school pigeon tipped us that the Murdoch gang was going to work tonight. Could be a phony tip, you know. We've got number four. Supposing it isn't, Matthew. I can't just sit around and wait for Murdoch to prove that stool pigeon was selling the truth. Wait a minute. Henry Carson dies in 30-story plunge air. Diamond Merchant is suicide. Uh, I thought maybe what that news kid was yelling might be something you might use, Blackie, but all it was was some suicide or something. Yeah, I know. Look, Matthews, yep. suppose you beat it down to headquarters and keep me posted. I left Mary Wesley at my apartment, and I'll go back there until you get some word. Huh? How's that? Uh, it's all right with me, Blackie, only I wish I could help you more about that Murdoch guy, like tell you where to find him, for instance. Oh, don't worry about that, Matthews. I'm quite sure that Murdoch will out. <laughs> Blackie, isn't that awful? Well, it's not good, Mary. Why do people do such things? I don't know why people even listen to such things. Mind if I turn off the radio? Mm-mm. It's all right with me. But a few minutes of relaxation might help me think of some way to break... You want me to answer the door, darling? <laughs> no, thanks, Mary. I'll get it. And please don't use that word, darling. Somehow it's got to lead to trouble. <laughs> all right, Blackie, if you say so. I won't use it again. I bet for once you wish Inspector Faraday were ringing the doorbell now, don't you? How right you are. Yes? You, Boston Blanky? Mm-hmm. Okay, come along with me. Who are you? Never mind who I am, but come on. Well, I don't know you, and obviously you don't know me, or you wouldn't talk to me like that. I know who you are, bud, and you're coming with me if I have to drag you all the way. Get a couple of guys to help you, so this will be an even fight. I don't need anybody except these five friends, my knuckles. <laughs> Brother, how wrong you are. Blackie, what's the matter? This guy wants me to go out with him. But he's going out alone. Well, I'm glad he fell out in the hall. Now I don't have to sweep him out. It's that. Blackie, who was he? I don't know. I asked him, but he seemed to want to talk with his fists. Well, we had a brief but successful conversation. You certainly made quick work of him. What did he want? Uh, he wanted me to go somewhere with him. I have an idea he was sent up here by the Murdoch gang. And I'm glad he was, too. Glad? Uh-huh. I needed the exercise. Oh. Now all I need is some information that will lead me to Murdoch. <laughs> Can't you tell by looking at me? Why'd you tell me Blackie was that good with his hands? I'm new around here, remember? Sit down, Dan. Sit down. I sent you to bring Blackie here so I'd be sure he'd keep off the Murdoch case. What happened? Oh, Inspector, I, I went up to get Blackie and bring him in like you asked me to, but before I knew it, we were pitching fists at each other. Well, they look as if Blackie did all the pitching and you did all the catching. Well, that ain't wrong, either. Fine detective you are. If you can't bring in Boston Blackie, how can you ever bring in a criminal? I guess I'll have to bring it in myself. How? How are you going to do it? Like he hit a policeman, didn't he? Well, there's a law against that. 
And I'm going to use the law against Boston Blackie. Headquarters, Matthew speaking. Hi, Matthews. This is Blackie. I think that tip you got on Murdoch was the McCoy. One of his goons just came calling on me. No kidding, Blackie. What'd you do with him? <laughs> I took care of him, believe me. Yeah? And I got out of the apartment and sent Miss Wesley home so that I wouldn't be around if Murdoch wanted to make sure I'd be taken care of. You're calling me because you figure I can't reach you that right, Blackie? Uh -huh. And also because I want to know where Murdoch is hiding out. I figure on calling on him in person. We still don't know, Blackie. Only that's not the only thing we don't know down at headquarters. If we knew where he was, we'd pick him up. Uh, but maybe you had nothing on him. Matthews, can you meet me in an hour at the corner of Lincoln Square in the drive? Well, sure, I guess so. What's up? I'll get you in a jam if I keep calling headquarters like this. The evening's early yet, and we may still have time to get to Murdoch and either of us, well, if we get some more information. Meet me at Lincoln Square, and we'll try and get an angle. <laughs> Everything all ready, Tom? Sure, sure, Mr. Murdoch. Everything is set. We're too early to go on a job now, ain't we? We do not go out on a job now, Tom. We go to look over the joint to see that everything is according to plan. It would not be very good for us to show up later on, all ready to snag that safe and find that there is an armful of cops surrounding the place. Uh, you got it right, boss. That wouldn't be very good, would it? Just drive past the building, Tommy. Not too fast. And we'll take in the sights. Yeah, yeah. Next time we come by... We'll be taking something out. Blackie! Hey, Blackie. Oh, hi, Sergeant Matthews. I've been waiting for you. Yeah. So you look excited. What's going on? Got a lead on Murdoch? Not exactly. Blackie, why did you beat up? What the... What detective? Dan Wilson, the detective Inspector Wells, sent to your apartment to pick you up. What? That big guy was a detective? Yes. Well, send him to bring you in so he could talk to you about keeping your nose out of the Murdoch case. Oh, this is great. Now I'm up to my neck in an assault case. But, Matthews, I didn't know that guy was a detective. I'd never seen him before. I know he's new, Blackie, but Wells is hopping mad. He's got some men out looking for you. Thanks for the tip-off. I'm really in a spot this time. How am I going to get on Murdoch's trail if I've got to keep ducking cops? You got me, Blackie. I've also got a problem. Are you supposed to arrest me, Sergeant? No. Well... That's one thing in my favor. At least I haven't got three stripes against me. And now back to Boston Blackie. The notorious Murdoch gang, once broken up by the police, has reorganized. And police have a tip that they will begin operations within a few hours. Inspector Faraday is out of town. And Jim Wells, the deputy inspector taking Faraday's place, doesn't want Blackie in on the case. A detective, unknown to Blackie, comes to take him to headquarters. But Blackie beats him up. Now, Blackie not only has to break up the Murdoch gang, but has to avoid arrest himself. As we return to our story, he phones his friend, Mary Wesley. Hello? Hello, Mary, this is Blackie. Blackie, where are you? calls on my radio and there's an alarm out for you. I know, but uh, I've just come up with a crazy idea, Mary. Oh. Now, look, look. The reason I didn't know how to deal with the Murdoch gang is because I couldn't figure out what they're up to. Just hoping you still haven't. <laughs> Remember I told you what I heard that newsboy yelling? Yeah, something about the uh, suicide of a, of a diamond merchant. Uh-huh, and we heard the same story over the radio. The victim's name was Henry Carson, and he was a big shot at the Larchmont Diamond Company. Yeah, so what? So this. The Larchmont Diamond Company has a break-proof safe. It can't be Jimmy to blast it open. Now, this is just a crazy hunch. But I've had crazier ones, and they've been right. I know what you're thinking, Blackie. You think Mr. Carson was forced to give the Murdoch gang the combination to the Larchmont Company safe, and then he realized what he'd done and killed himself. Or was murdered, Mary. I don't say there's any sense to any of this, but just the same, I'm going to the Larchmont Company and beat the Murdoch gang to that safe. Oh, no, now, Blackie, don't. Go to the police with your hunch and let them guard the safe. No, Mary, I can't do that. Well... I may be absolutely wrong, but I don't want to send the police to the Larchmont Company and then have Murdoch pull a job on the other side of town. Inspector Wells would just love me for that. Yeah, I get your point. But, Blackie, if that safe can't be opened without knowing the combination, how... How what, Mary? Nothing, Blackie. I forgot that with you, no safe is safe. <laughs> Mr. 
Inspector Wells, I've got a confession to make. Now you later, Dan, and get out with the other detectives looking for Blackie. Uh, look, Inspector Blackie didn't know I'm a policeman. He didn't? Didn't you tell him? No, I, I guess I, I thought I was tougher than he is. Maybe I should have told him. Yes, Dan, you should have. I didn't think Blackie would hit a policeman. But I still want him. I want him found and brought in. Yes, sir. I don't want him interfering when we figure out what Murdoch is up to. This case is my big chance. Yeah, yeah, I know. I... Just a minute. Hello? Inspector Wells, this is Andrews, third precinct. Yes, Andrews, what is it? I just spotted Boston Blackie, Inspector Wells. He was trying to get into the Larchmont Diamond Company, a small building on Reading Road. Huh? I thought maybe you wanted to grab him really doing something wrong. He's still in there. Thanks, Andrews. I'll take it from here. Yes, sir. Come on, Dan. Where to, Inspector? The Larchmont Diamond Company. We're grabbing Blackie ourselves. It may be for robbery. <laughs> What time is it, Dom? Plenty early yet, Mr. Murdoch. We'll get to the Lodgement Diamond Company right on schedule. Yeah, we will. But it is very interesting to me to find out whether our other two boys will be there on time. Well, Lenny and his partner left 15 minutes ahead of us just to make sure. I hope they will remember what to do. And I hope you will remember what I tell you to do. This is a big job. We'll make it an easy one, too, Mr. Mylack. Easy for us, but hard for anyone who is in our way. Let us step on it, Tom. I'm in a great hurry to get rich. Easy now, Dan. This is the Larchman Diamond office, and there's a light in the next room. If Blackie's up to something, we'll grab him. Right, Hey, nobody here. Oh, I see. Look, Inspector Wells, Blackie was here, all right. The safe's open and empty. Yeah, not fried or dynamited open, either. This is certainly Blackie's type of work. Yes. <laughs> Look over there. What? That body. Don't tell me it's Blackie gagged and tied up. No, but it's probably Blackie's work. Something he had to do when he was caught opening this safe. A dead body, huh? Very dead. There's the guard here, judging by the uniform. Well, I guess we sent out another alarm for yes, Blackie. Dan. Only this time we're going to grab him. Maybe for murder. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Blackie. Oh. Hello, Blackie. Well, I did it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I heard it on the radio. I did a good job of it, didn't I? Too good, Blackie. You know that you wanted... You know what you wanted for? Robbery, I suppose. <laughs> but I'll clear that up. I'm going to put the jewelry in a box and send it down to Inspector Wells right away. Yeah, well, that's nice. Maybe Inspector Wells will put that corpse in a box and send it to you, darling. What corpse? The, uh, the guard they found dead at the Larchmont Diamond Company, not ten feet away from the safe. What? Blackie, darling, I know you didn't kill that man, but who did? It's easy to figure out who did, Mary. I was right. The Larchmont Diamond Company is the place the Murdoch gang was going to rob. They got there after I did, found the safe empty, and the guard there, they killed him when he wouldn't say where the diamonds were. Well, that's, that's fine, darling. Only how can you prove it? I'll be able to prove it by finding the Murdoch gang. Oh. I've been right so far, haven't I? I guess the meaning of Henry Carson's death. Yeah, that was a good guess. But suppose you do the rest of your guessing up here in my apartment. You'll, uh, you'll be all right up here, darling. Say, that sounds like a good idea. I'll be right up. See you in a few minutes. Yeah, bye. Darling. So long. You do a good job of what I tell you to do, Miss Wesley. All right, then, Mr. Murdoch. Now, will you stop pointing that gun at me? Uh-uh. I'm pretty smart figuring Blackie would call you, which is why we came here. Tom. Yeah, Mr. Murdoch. We will stand here on either side of this girl and face the front door. I get it, Mr. Murdoch. You mean it's Blackie who gets it when he comes in the door? Yeah. Not exactly. First, Blackie will tell us where he hides the jewel. It's a good thing I figure he's the only one in town who could do that job on a large mine safe. Keep your eye on the front door, Tommy. I was just thinking, Mr. Murdoch, maybe I should face the other way and keep a gun on the back door. Tommy, no guy comes to see his girl by the back door, especially if he does not suspect anything. And Blackie has no reason to. We will face the front door here, like this. Okay, I guess you're right. Mr. Murdoch, what happens after Blackie tells you where he's hidden the jewelry? We kill him, and then we kill you. What? But because we are gentle. It will be ladies first. Hey, Mr. Murdoch, ain't we waited for Blackie an awful long time? It's only a half hour since he says he's coming up. 
Stay awake, Tom, and keep your eyes on the front door. Sure, but maybe Blackie ain't coming. He'll be here. He always keeps his word, unfortunately. We hear Blackie admit he has the jewelry when he talks on the phone to you, Miss Wesley. But we already know he has it because at the Larchmont Company, we meet a guard. And before we kill him, he says his safe is already locked. Yeah, Miss Wesley, and we looked at that safe, and it wasn't blasted open or nothing. And who can open a safe without the combination but Boss and Blackie? Boss is smart. So he keeps assuring hey, me. Hey, Mr. Murdoch, I think I heard a noise in the hall. Good, maybe this is Blackie now. Oh, Blackie, for once, go back on your word and don't show up. You say come in when Blackie knocks on the door, Miss Wesley. No, I won't do it. Oh, yes, you will. Hey, you. Are. Are you? Uh, Blackie! Mr. Murdoch, he's behind us. He came in the back way. Shoot, Tom. Don't be stupid enough to try that. Grab your guns, both of you. Hurry up. I've got a gun and I don't have all day, Murdoch. Okay. You, punk. What are you waiting for? Uh, nothing, Blackie. I ain't waiting for nothing. Well, then you look much prettier without those guns. Now, I think I'll just... Open up in there! Open this door! So your apartment is getting to be the most popular place in town, Mary. Better open the door. Oh, but it might be some of Murdoch's men. It also might be Deputy Inspector Wells and some of his men. In fact, that's who I'm sure it is. Oh, Oh, okay, if you say so. They must have made the noise that Murdoch's dude heard. Uh, Over. Here we are. All right. Oh, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, What's going on here? Blackie, drop that gun. I will now, Inspector Wells. Uh, You know this man here? Hey, that's Murdoch. Come on, Murdoch. You're coming with me. So are you, Blackie. I want you. Well, what you should want him for is to thank him. He didn't kill that guard. I know he didn't. I heard this Murdoch admit killing the guard while I was outside the door with my men. I just wanted Blackie downtown as a... Well, as a material witness. Uh, you can get there when you like, Blackie. Well, thank you. Uh, come on, you two characters. All right, boys. Rush these guys out. Well, Marty, I'm glad you understood what I tried to tell you on the telephone. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> if you hadn't kept calling me, darling, on the telephone, I wouldn't have suspected something was wrong, and I would have come barging in the front door right into our friends Murdoch and company. Yeah, I'm glad you warned me that that word darling would lead me in trouble. <laughs> I'm glad, too. Hey, how did Inspector Wells get here, by the way? Inspector Wells? Oh, I called him and told him if he'd meet me here, I'd give myself up. I figured Wells would come in handy in the event that Murdoch got out of hand. Sit down. Sit down, Blackie. No, thanks, Wells. You got the box of jewelry I took out of the Larchmont safe, all right? Yeah, Sergeant Matthews turned that in. I turned it over to Matthews. It's a very good thing I got the idea of robbing the safe before Murdoch got there. It's a very lucky thing that I had a half-hour start on it. We know you could help us on the case, Blackie. Sure, I'll bet. You need anything more from me? No, I heard enough outside Miss Wesley's door, and besides, we got a confession out of Murdoch. Wells, uh, you know why Murdoch and his gang killed the guard when you thought I killed him. I never really thought you killed him, Blackie. I was Wells? Sure. Well, it was hard for me to believe you killed him. I knew that... Wells? Okay, okay. Yeah, I know what happened. I told you that in Miss Wesley's apartment. That's right, you did. You'll see that the Murdoch reward is split with his family. Huh? Well, I was going to do that. Wells? Well, I had an idea I might think it over. Wells? Never occurred to me, but now that you mention it, it isn't a bad idea. That's different. You know, of course, why I called you to say that I was going to surrender to you if you'd come to Miss Wesley's apartment. I know now. You wanted me there to grab the Murdoch gang. Tell me something, Blackie. What? You do things like this with Faraday, too? I mean, set up every case so he steps in and grabs all the glory? Of course not. I only do things like that for people like you, Wells. Why is that? Faraday doesn't need my help. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, it's only when Faraday's out of town that you find out what a hardcore uh, Inspector Faraday loyalist Boston Blackie is. Faraday must have flown to the West Coast, because I don't think Blackie would be saying that if Faraday, saying so many nice things about Faraday, uh, if Faraday were within a thousand miles. 
At any rate, we turn now to listener comments and feedback. And Bill writes, I noticed since they started including a, a preview of next week's episode, they sped up the ending organ music. I have to say that when you first started airing this iteration of Boston Blackie, I couldn't stand the organ music, but it grew on me. I'll have to get used to the faster version. Well, that's what tends to happen with uh, things. You just get used to them. And whether good or bad, sometimes they're just familiar. Uh, Michael says, I'm still, after many years of listening to old-time radio shows, put off by shows with organ music. I do like Blackie and one of the Sherlock Holmes versions, but sure wish they both could have had music by someone other than Wurlitzer, uh, which uh, refers to the organ, I believe. All right, well, thanks so much for the comment, uh, Michael. And Bill adds that Wurlitzer was pretty much the only game in town back then and probably too early for the Hammond B3. Again, referring to the organ. All right, well, thanks so much for the comments. Appreciate that. We will be back on Friday with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next Thursday, another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.